Hi everyone and good evening. My name is Bipin Lakani and I'm the National Account Manager for the Insurance Institute of Canada and I'm pleased to welcome you this evening to our 2015 FCIP information webinar. Over the next half hour we will provide you with perspectives on and answers to your questions about the FCIP program. We have three panelists with us today. Donna Alnamari, who's an FPI candidate and w someone who has just completed her six courses this year. A facilitator, Sean Finucan. And I'd like to start by introducing you to our first panelist, our Vice President of Programs at the Insurance Institute of Canada, Ted Hellier. Ted? Thanks, Pippin, and uh, hello, everyone. I'm going to start by giving you a very brief uh, overview of the FCIP program, and then, of course, be pleased to answer any questions that you might have. You know, the program uh, offers a comprehensive business education with a unique emphasis on the Canadian property and casualty industry. The content and the design of the program reflects input from senior leaders in our industry as well as qualified professors at Canadian business schools. FCIP graduates have given us some great feedback on the program, including some benefits that they gained in the program. For example, students finish the program with a broad perspective of the PNC industry. Some grads have told us that the program gave them a better idea of the kinds of decisions that PNC executives make every day. And the knowledge that they gain is timely and relevant. The program builds skills required to solve some of the real world business issues that we face in the industry today. And the program gives candidates the knowledge and skills that are typically sought in the industry when opportunities for advancement arise. The FCIP program can definitely help expand your leadership skills. As we know, leadership can take many different forms. And it will, might be interesting for you to listen to a selection of industry executives discussing the FCIP program in a video that's posted on our website. So here's a list of the six courses in the program. Should be coming up on your screen. There we go. So there's the six courses in the program. And you'll note an even split between a common business school topics, strategy, leadership, and finance, and topics that provide a stronger connection to our industry, enterprise risk management, emerging issues, and the integrative learning course. This is what makes this program really unique in our industry. I invite you to take a virtual tour of the courses on our website and hear comments from uh, recent grads. You know, an interesting aspect of the program that benefits both FCIP candidates as well as their employers is the integrative learning capstone. In this final two semester course, candidates will use all that they've learned in the preceding five courses and complete a work-based project at their place of employment. Some of the topics that we've heard about that candidates used in their capstone projects include a discussion about adverse selection and flood insurance that used the 2013 Calgary floods as an example. And another project explored how insurers, claims departments, and adjusters can better prepare for an increasing number of weather-related catastrophes. That's it for me for now. Back to you, Bippin. Thanks very much, Ted. You know, one of the things about the FCIP program that's different is that it's an online program. And as such, courses are guided by qualified and experienced instructors, one of whom is here with us today. Sean Finucan teaches our financial management and enterprise risk management courses. Sean, can you tell us a little bit more about how these online courses work? Sure. Thanks, Bippin. Uh, first, a little bit about me, and I assume I'm typical of the facilitators. Uh, I have a PhD in finance, but I also have uh, many years' experience managing money and investments and for pension funds and as well for insurance companies. Uh, I've been a professor for many years, and in fact, the last four years, I've specialized 
almost uniquely in distance learning and executive education. So that's where this FCIP absolutely fits in. Now the role of the facilitator you'll find is a little bit different than you may have seen in a typical college or university course. Rather than have me stand at the front of the room and talk at you for three hours while you scribble notes furiously, instead I help guide the candidates through the program. One of the things that we say about a good MBA program, and I think it's definitely true of this program, is that you'll learn far more from each other than you will through uh, the professor or the facilitator. And the facilitator is there to help that learning. So that's really my role or the facilitator's role in these courses. Now the actual courses are 100% online, asynchronous. Each week you can generally work at your own pace during the day, although there's milestones throughout the week. Uh, the main thing that every week is built around is the discussions. And it's also a key part of your assessment for this course. In the discussions, you will have read a set amount of material from the study books, articles, journals, textbooks that you're given each week. Then you'll have a question to look at which helps you apply those theories to the real world. So if we look at some of the things that have happened uh, in recent times, for example, the legislation in Ontario about reducing automobile fees, uh, the two capstone topics which Ted mentioned both are, came out of my course, uh, topics that we looked at, adverse selection, Calgary floods, um, and so all of these are done throughout the course. The capstone, of course, then lets you look in much more depth at one of these small topics as it affects your own work, your company, or the industry in general. The other key areas throughout the course, as well as discussions, there's assignments regularly. This could be uh, generally in terms of an essay, but in my course there's also some quantitative basic, just under, make sure you understand the basic skills. And then there's some group projects, which may involve writing a paper together, it may involve analyzing a case together, or it may involve having a group facilitate a discussion for a week. So, uh, and that's, but if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to address them. Pippin? Sean, uh, appreciate that. And we will get to your questions, so if you do have questions, please enter them on the bottom right-hand side of your screen in the panel that says questions, and we will be addressing these, uh, passing these questions on to our panelists today. Before we get to all of your questions, though, um, Ted mentioned earlier what some of our graduates have been saying about the FCIP. So next up, I'd like you to hear from our FCIP candidate, Donna Alnamari from Montreal. Donna will share her personal perspective on the FCIP and what it means to her. Donna? We'll just wait for Donna. She may be having um, microphone difficulties. So while we, do, while we wait on Donna, can I just pose a question for you, uh, Sean, that I see here? Um, so Sean, you know, can you tell us a little bit about, um, you, you know, people haven't taken an online course and you've kind of described it from an asynchronous perspective. You use the word asynchronous. What does that really mean? How does that work in people's lives? Sure. So uh, the typical college course happens synchronously. So everyone shows up in a room at the same time and uh, everyone has to do the work at the same time, attend the lectures. Asynchronous means that things happen at different times. So you can think of it as the difference between an online session like this is synchronous, whereas an asynchronous session might be something like you have on uh, Facebook or a discussion forum where uh, you type something in now, then maybe you go have dinner, meet some friends, come back, and other people may have participated, and you can join in. The discussions happen the same way. So I make a posting at the beginning of the week on Monday, and then you have several days to answer. 
And as you log in every day, you'll see that other candidates have posted as well. And you have time to digest what they've done, think about it, do some more research, and then post after you've had a considered time to do so. Now, this is great for a lot of us. It's the way I prefer to work my life. Uh, it means you can work around work, you can work around family, uh, and work flexibly in the way that's best for both the student and the facilitator in this case. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. So we do have um, Donna back here. Donna, are you? Uh, yes. Are you available? Great. So I'm going to flip this over to our FCIP candidate, uh, Donna, who's just completed all her courses to share her perspectives with you. Go for it. Thank you, Bethan, and sorry about that. Hi. Uh, my name is Dana Alnamari. I'm actually a senior marine underwriter with Intact Insurance out of Montreal, Quebec. And as Bipin said, I just completed my last uh, course of the fellowship program uh, being the Capstone Project. Um, I, I guess I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I came over with some experience in the insurance industry from overseas. And uh, I also worked as a commercial insurance underwriter with Intact. Uh, then over as a marine uh, as a marine insurance underwriter with AXA, I also have a background in banking. Um, and uh, basically, personally, I was looking for my next challenge and uh, the, the, an opportunity really to grow my skills and my understanding of the insurance market in Canada and in North America in general. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the other part of the balance, if you will, that, that we all go through, I also have a family. I have... Um, one son who started the whole adventure with me with the CIPs uh, a little about five years ago. He was six years old, so he's now turning 15, and has lived through uh, the whole experience of mom studying and uh, you know mom trying to catch up with technology, if you will, over the years. Uh, I I also have you know the other than the obvious responsibilities of uh, of cooking and uh, you know sharing responsibilities with my husband and full-time work. Uh, I, I also do gardening. I enjoy doing outdoor activities. Of course, I have a social life like everybody else is, does. Um, and uh, so, yes, you know, I come in pretty much uh, very similar to, uh, to all of you trying to figure out how to balance all of this out. As Bitten said, I actually finished uh, all five, uh, course, uh, five courses and then the capstone project that took a year. I did this all in, uh, in three years. I can honestly say I would not regret a minute of it. Uh, it was an incredible learning experience. Uh, the time commitment aspect, it personally, I, uh, I put in from 22 to 25 hours uh, a week. I must emphasize that the time commitment, because this is uh, web-based, is entirely up to the participants. So there is a minimum that you do have to do in order to keep up with the material and the requirements, the, the material that Sean was talking about that is provided to us as uh, students. Um, and of course, it takes a certain amount of time vis-a-vis uh, -vis how much time you actually want to put in doing outside research to expand your knowledge and your understanding of the macro subjects that are really given through this course, um, and as well as uh, actually interacting online with, uh, you know, with the other um, people in the course. Of course, like I said, work-life balance was one thing I did need to, one of the things that I enjoyed learning how to do. I had come out of my CIPs uh, that I did purely by correspondence, because I did this in English from Quebec. and. Um, I, it, this was completely different. So doing this online, I had complete control, but I also had guidance from our professors, uh, such as Sean. I also had uh, input and ideas and someone to sound ideas against and share experiences with, and that would be my other colleagues in this. Um, all in all, I would have to say that this has been one of the most enriching experiences I've had in my past, and certainly I wouldn't trade it for a minute. Uh, but then that's I think that pretty much sums up my background. Uh, I'll switch back to you. Um, I guess Bippin is still coming back. Um, Bippin, are you there? Yeah, th thanks, Donna, for sharing. Um, you know, I, I, I know um, you to be a perfectionist, and so Sean tells us you're such a perfectionist that you 
plugged in a whole lot of time there. You said about 22 hours a week. Uh, the typical FCIP course commitment is approximately 15 hours per course per week. Um, you know, and that's what we find most students doing. But um, Sean insisted that you were such a perfectionist that you just put in a whole lot more time. So hats off to you. Um, and so now I'd like to open this up to questions. We've already got a couple coming in. So please feel free to key in your questions at the bottom right hand corner. Um, and so Donna, I have a question here for you almost immediately. Um, why did you decide to take the FCIP? What influenced you to do so? Well, actually, in my career, like I said, having come out of doing my CIPs, um, I, I finished them. I took a year off. And then I was left with the gnawing of I wanted to do something. I needed another challenge. Um, someone in the past had advised me, had given me a really good piece of advice, which is uh, in order to balance your work and your life, you've got to have something else to, to sort of help expand your mind. Um, I was really interested in doing my master's program, but it was not the right time um, with you know, buying a house and my kid going to, um, to private school. It was like not the right time to be doing a master's. I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to get into a master's program with the new requirements. So I wanted something to, initially I wanted something to keep me up to date uh, and to, I thought, hey, if I, can come, if I can come out learning something new that I didn't know, it would be, that would be a really good thing. Of course, little did I know at the time, the benefits would have been so much more than in my wildest dreams. Um, you know, uh, things like, for instance, we're doing this online. It's not something that I ever envisioned that I would get that kind of an experience, that kind of a challenge, a personal challenge of sharing information, researching it, um, trying to analyze people's posts, trying to analyze the articles that we were provided in our uh, information pack in order to come back with us with an intelligent question. Um, I, I can, once again, emphasize it really was an incredible experience. It was something that I was very excited to do. And um, I'm happy that I, that I undertook this. I'm happy that I couldn't afford to go to do my master's program at the time. OK, that's, that's awesome, uh, Donna. Um, I have another question here. And I think Ted is for you. Um, what kinds of candidates are you seeing enrolled in the program right now? Typically, who are the other candidates in the program? We've heard from Donna, but who else are you seeing out there? You mean besides Donna? <laughs> um, yeah, the, you know what? The program attracts a whole range of insurance professionals, not just those that are kind of destined for the C-suite, but, uh, but all sorts of people in different areas of the industry who are interested in getting, giving themselves a challenge and, and really strengthening their uh, leadership potential. If I look at the winter 2015 semester that just concluded, we had students from across uh, eight of the Canadian provinces. Uh, we had people who were ranging from three to f minimum of three to four years experience in the industry all the way up to about 20 years. We had jobs that were all over the map, underwriters, adjusters, brokers, agents, uh, but also uh, risk managers, uh, technical analysts, and customer service specialists. So I think the message is it really is for everyone in the industry who is looking to advance their career and looking for uh, that kind of executive development uh, profile that would be um, opening doors for them in uh, upward uh, succession into their organizations. If I could anticipate the sort of the leading question that usually draws from that, uh, Bipin, and I think it's typically asked of, uh, of uh, people who are interested in the FCIP but not sure, and that's around the uh, academic prerequisite of university or college degree and wondering why there is such a requirement. And if I can go back to when the program was first developed, uh, we sought out research uh, and input from our industry. And what we were told is that increasingly, uh, university degree being the price of entry into management positions in the industry. And so if we have people coming into our industry, taking the CIP, looking for that next step,
step in professional development, it just didn't make uh, a sense to have a program that would be repetitive to their uh, programs that they would have previously taken in, ac in, in their academic uh, background. But I can tell you that uh, something new is uh, coming along that will help those that don't have the university background. Uh, we're introducing a new advanced CIP program starting in September that will provide an alternate entry for people who have a CIP designation and a minimum of five years experience in the industry. And this advanced CIP program will offer a, a four courses and prepare, properly prepare candidates for the academic challenge and the rigor of the uh, FCIP program. So hopefully that uh, helps answer a couple of the, uh, the questions. Yeah, and I guess related to that. OK. Uh, you, yeah, I guess just another follow-up question that just came through was about advanced standing. Uh, there isn't uh, advanced standing into the fellowship program. and. Usually the questions that I get are people who have perhaps had a, taken an MBA program and said, all right, well, I see a finance course. Well, I've already taken finance courses, so why can't I get advanced standing? And the reason is simple, that as I described the courses earlier, they are unique to the industry. So while we have taken uh, existing uh, material uh, from uh, business schools, as uh, I think Sean can probably attest to, even the uh, management courses that uh, he might teach in other uh, in other areas are a little different than the type of uh, I dialogue that would go on in the uh, 530 financial management course. And so there is no advanced standing. It really is important for everyone to come through our program with the courses uh, in the curriculum so that they have, uh, they carry equal weight. Great. Thank you, Ted. Um, Donna, I have another question here I think that's probably directed at you. Um, what sorts of advantages do you feel you've gained by taking the FCIP? And, you know, in other words, how does your employer view your skills now that you've almost completed the program? What doors? Um, you know, have been open to you as a result of this? I probably have to say that one of the first doors that opened to me was that of exposure. Uh, basically, even starting my, the initial, um, the first course, which was the strategy in the PNC um, insurance market. A little bit of background, I did this uh, when I was still, when Intact had just purchased AXA. So in order to understand a strategy and understand how corporate governance works specifically for insurance companies, like uh, Ted just said, um, I had taken courses at university uh, you know, my, in, in my bachelor's degree about the structures of companies. But it doesn't really lend itself to, to my, it did not lend itself to my understanding how it applied to insurance companies. Why did we have a CEO and a president that were separate? I couldn't understand that. I couldn't envision it for our industry specifically. So of course I turn around and I ask questions of my manager. At a certain point in time, the questions sort of went beyond, specifically during a period of an acquisition. So he referred me higher up. Um, I ended up, um, be, ended up with a mentor who was several layers higher than me. So this was someone who could give me more insight into the company. Um, personally, for me, it, it, this person helped put me in contact where I was asking questions, uh, for instance, on financial management, questions on enterprise risk management that were way outside the scope of front lines operations uh, in the insurance sector, uh, you know, even for a company as large as Intact. He turned around and he, he put me in contact with other people within our organization that normally I wouldn't. People like, for instance, the VP of risk management. Uh, I, f I found myself with my colleagues telling me, why are you going to go meet this person? Do we even have someone like that in our company? Um, and of course, I ended up this person saying, okay, what questions do you have for me? What would you like me to explain to you? That was the kind of an exposure that I got. Uh, this is, of course, over and above the understanding of management concepts, leadership concepts, financial concepts that were not about the market in general. You know, you could get that out of a textbook. That's what you have at university levels. Different, different programs, albeit. But this was really very much about our structures, our companies, 
um, things like solvency, for instance, which is um, the uh, new regulations coming down on finance and insurance. I, I had heard about them through uh, the insurance program way before I started to see it in the newsletters, before we started to hear it about it in the news. This is something that normally um, an underwriter or a claims person may not necessarily come across. I was able to turn around and say, oh yeah, I know what this is, or to be able to discuss these, uh, these ideas or um, these things coming down the tube with people higher up. They started to look at me differently. Down the line, when I came to do my capstone project, I automatically had one or two people who understood what point I was coming from. So when I came to ask for a more macro level project, because we're talking about a project that is at the level of the industry, something that is specific for your employer but of importance to the industry as a whole. Sometimes when you're a frontline underwriter, most people look at you and go, you know, well, how about documenting what you do day to day? How about job descriptions? Okay. I had to take it larger than that. I wanted to take it larger than that. And I actually managed to get the support to do that thanks to the courses and the kinds of questions that I was asking. Uh, networking was a huge, yeah. Networking great, was perhaps though. the largest yeah. thing. Thank you. you, you I, I just heard you say that, mm -hmm. and there's another question related to what you yeah. just said. It's a perfect segue because the question is, how does this integrative, you know, project work and like kind of who's involved so I'm thinking that's both Sean and Ted but you know Ted I'm gonna just turn it over to you to start once I get my mic going here I'll be <laughs> be happy to uh, start this uh, answer so just really briefly uh, the integrative uh, learning uh, course is really th I would s I would say it summarizes into three phases the first phase is when the candidates uh, prepare their project uh, and get their project uh, topic approved, uh, which can be a, uh, a project within their organizations or a hypothetical project based on a, a current issue in the industry. Uh, the second main phase through the bulk of the two semesters is the uh, candidates working within their project teams as well as their other uh, candidates and their facilitator in developing their project. And then the last uh, interesting conclusion and the last phase of the uh, course includes a uh, presentation to an evaluation panel on their project. Uh, and this is live to a panel of three, uh, an evaluation panel of three evaluators. And then the completion of the research project. Um, Bippin mentioned Sean might be involved in this answer as well. and, and I tell you that Sean uh, was a participant in one of the evaluation panels recently uh, that we held in Vancouver and uh, Sean perhaps you can give your own uh, personal uh, viewpoint as to uh, what that uh, evaluation panel uh, looked like. Sure, thanks Ted. Uh, so this was my first time attending and in general uh, the presentations went throughout the day and there were three members on the evaluation panel. There was uh, an academic, which was myself in this case. There was somebody to represent Insurance Institute. And then there was a very senior member of the PNC industry uh, from here in BC. So in fact, you know, anybody who works in BC probably knows who that person was if they, they heard the name. So it's people who have a lot of experience, both on the education side and on the industry side, to see how well they've taken what they've learned and applied it to a real situation. Uh, the presentation is a summary of about of what you've done in your project, what the goals were, what the outcomes were, and how this demonstrated that you've learned leadership throughout the program. And I was amazed at the high quality of the work. Uh, I know the others were amazed at how applicable it was to uh, the companies and the industry because it could be an industry project or a company project. Uh, and it's not easy. It's a huge amount of work, as I'm sure uh, Donna will uh, attest. Uh, and there's problems along the way. Sometimes you have a great project and it's going well, and your company gets taken over, or you take over somebody. So all of those things are something that a leader in the industry needs to deal with, and that uh, candidates have to deal with throughout their projects. Pippin? Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Sean and Ted. Um, Donna, I guess there's. Uh, there's a couple other questions here, but I think this one stands out for me, for people tuning in. Um, 
What advice or recommendations would you have for somebody thinking of um, doing their CIP, completing their, their next level of designation? Um, okay, the first thing that I would say is you're saying thinking. I would like to say don't think about it. I would, I would do the three years in a heartbeat. I went in not thinking it was three years. I thought, oh, I can skate through this. I'll do two at a time. I'll be done in a year. I wouldn't trade it for anything. The reason why I'm saying this, it sound, I know I, I'm so, starting to sound like a marketing commercial, but it really was, I, I benefited so much from this. Um, the other thing that I would say real quick is make sure that you have access to a mentor. Find someone in your organization that you trust or in your network. Uh, use that person to grow your network. Use that person to sound off. Make that person your champion. This is the opportunity that these courses give you and the program at the end. Um, definitely do as much research as you can. Take part in the discussions. Uh, access the professors. Uh, that's, what, that's exactly what they're there for. Ask questions. Question everything. Analyze everything. It's the only opportunity that you'll have because this, this is not information coming out of a book. This is, in, this is information coming from, um, in, this, is, this is stuff that is being written day to day. This is a podcast. This is a, a new TED uh, emission on TV. This is a, uh, an article that you read that you bring and you tie it into leadership. Uh, this is really what it's at. Take, use it to the max. That's what I'd say. <laughs> awesome. Those are, that's, that's great advice, uh, Donna. Really appreciate your candidness to this. So at this point, what I'd like to do is just uh, insert a couple of reminders here. If you are interested in applying for admission to the program, the process, the deadlines, all of the info is available on, on our website at insuranceinstitute.ca slash FCIP. Um, if we didn't get a chance to respond to some of your questions, and I think um, there are a couple of questions here, um, if you have some, you know, we, we will get back to you on these questions for sure, and we make sure that you weren't uh, left wondering about anything. Um, I think we do have time for one one more question, if, um, if you're okay. Um, and I think the question was uh, around around the time of the program, um, is there a certain amount of time that you have to complete all of the courses? Um, you know, um, it's a question I think um, for Ted, uh, is there a prescribed time limit for the program uh, or is it kind of you can do it at your own pace? Does it have to be completed in the three years that it took Donna to do it? Uh, easy answer to uh, this question, uh, and the answer is there's no time limit. You can do, definitely do it at your own pace, but you should follow the recommended course uh, structure that is noted in the syllabus so that, as uh, Donna was relating to, you can uh, take advantage of prior learning that will definitely ease your way in subsequent uh, courses. For instance, uh, I know Sean would highly recommend that you make sure you have the financial management course under your belt before you tackle the enterprise risk management course, et cetera. And of course, you have to have all five courses done before you do the uh, integrative learning course. But other, otherwise, we do have several folks who, you know, life happens. And we have people who have had to take a bit of a, a sabbatical away from the courses because of uh, having uh, children and uh, getting, wor getting work promotions, et cetera. So it does happen. And then we certainly welcome them back and uh, get them back in, involved to complete the program. Hopefully that answers. That's great. Thank you, Ted. So as I was saying again, too, you know, a lot of uh, this information uh, and a lot of other resources available uh, on the Insurance Institute website. Again, that address is insuranceinstitute.ca slash FCIP. And, you know, I recommend you can apply for admission to the program at any time. Um, if you need to have a discussion with your employer, I recommend downloading the business case. Uh, that's on our website as well, so you can uh, have that uh, business case uh, address the benefits of the program and its requirements between you and your employer as well. Um, so again, if you think of anything that's, um, you know, any information after this session is over, please don't hesitate to ask us a question or drop us a line at fcip at insuranceinstitute.ca. That email address is on your screen 
FCIP at insuranceinstitute.ca. At this point, I would like to thank everyone for taking time out after work hours to attend uh, this information session. Uh, we will be sending you a, a link to this uh, recorded, to, to a recording of this session, um, which will be posted on our website, and we'll get that out to you uh, within the next day. Um, so thanks again, everyone, uh, for attending. Have yourselves a great evening, and we look forward to seeing you in the program. Take care.